Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. In this podcast, we'll be addressing a very unlikely yet perfectly possible scenario. What if the internet failed? Stay with us. In our modern societies, we rely on the internet for each and everything in life. We do our shopping, pay our taxes, check our health files, enroll in university. We even find love online. And that's not all. Financial services, transport and tourism, security, even border management could not work the way they do without the internet. And COVID-19 has only increased our gigabytes consumption. But this dependency also makes us vulnerable. Imagine, just for a second, what would happen if the internet failed? Total chaos? Well, I don't know about that, but it would certainly alter our daily lives. Uh, People would not be able to withdraw cash or pay by card. Supermarkets would not be able to bill and sell products. And managing digital certificates, such as the COVID-19 vaccination certificate, would no longer be possible. But could the internet really fail? Oh, yes. And this is how. The internet has been designed for extraordinary resilience. Its decentralized structure as a network of networks is meant to ensure that, should one or multiple nodes fail, information could still be transmitted, even in the event of a nuclear war. However, the increasing importance of a few central players and the shift towards greater centralization have made the Internet more susceptible to failure. And failure could occur in several ways. For instance, through the destruction of cables as a result of a coordinated attack on a high number of nodes or an extreme weather event. Or, more importantly, through non-physical disruptions, such as distributed denial of service attacks that force major websites offline. Such attacks have in the past affected government services, hospitals, banks, even broadcasting companies such as the BBC. So, how can we prepare and protect ourselves against internet failure? Well... One problem is that, should this happen, we could not simply go back to the old ways of doing things. Moreover, efforts to increase the resilience of the Internet are hampered by the lack of knowledge about the exact configuration, the key players, and the very structure of the Internet. But there are some things we can do, especially at the level of the European Parliament. Here's Karl Piera from the European Parliamentary Research Service. There are three dimensions along which the European Parliament could strengthen the resilience of the Internet. First, in ongoing discussions concerning the Digital Markets Act, it can emphasize the importance of distributed Internet infrastructure, for instance by repatriating systems, service and storage to the EU. Second, to remedy some of the increased vulnerability of the Internet through centralization, the Parliament could call for a common European security certificate to be required for any device destined for sale in the common market and capable of connecting to the Internet. Third, the Parliament could support a coordinated effort to research and map the lacking information about what economic practices and developments may negatively affect the resilient infrastructure of the Internet and what alternatives are available to prevent this. What's clear, as more and more key services rely on Internet solutions, is that Europe should continue its efforts to increase Internet resilience. For more information, check out Carl Piera's briefing on the EPRS website. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. And thanks for listening.